All right, got time for another one. Everybody's right here. <laughs> Mr. Macaroni's having the time of his life. He's getting groomed. And he's got the round bale to himself. Okay, listen to this one. Hey, Steve. My name is Brian Miles, and I live in a small town in West Central Idaho. I spent a lot of my life on horseback in the Idaho backcountry, and have had many a fair share of run-ins with these damn things. I have a lot of respect for you and appreciate the fact that you're willing to be able to be a voice for all the people like me that want to talk about these stinky up and things, these stinky up and creatures, and our encounters with them without being laughed at or laughed at for doing so. Thank you. No problem, brother. It's easy. <clears throat> I left a comment in your last video about people wanting proof. Here you go. The first encounter I had with one of these creatures was absolutely the most terrifying experience I've ever had. About 10 years ago, me and a buddy packed our elk camp in the east central mountains of Idaho. It was about an eight hour ride in. The whole time we were riding, I felt very uncomfortable. My, my horse was also extremely tense, almost like an energy you can feel through your saddle. During the entire ride, I didn't see so much as a squirrel, but I did catch a nasty smell once in a while, almost like rotten fish guts mixed with skunk essence. Anyways, everything seemed to go okay, setting up camp, and we crashed early that night, looking forward to a full day elk hunting the next day. Sometime in the dead of night, I heard the strangest noise, and then had a cold chill run through me. The only way I can explain it, it was like my mind automatically... The only way I can explain it is what is like my mind automatically said, Oh, F me. And my immediate thought was, bear coming in the door. I sat up with my stream light, lit up in my left hand and my Springfield XD-M 45 ACP in my right hand pointed at the partially open door of the wall tent. Well, it wasn't a bear. This creature had reddish brown hair, not fur, hair. Had a stubby nose, large eyes, and was looking in at me and my buddy. We were in an eight by, we were in an eight foot by 10 foot wall tent and always left the flap to the door untied. This all took place in a matter of one to two seconds. After this thing took off, I noticed that my buddy was sitting up on one elbow staring at me and all he said was, what the up was that? Needless to say, we packed up and left early that morning and have never been back. The one thing I didn't mention was that it was the first time I have ever seen a grown man piss himself in fear and that shit isn't funny. For all those who want more proof, be careful what you wish for. This is my third, this is my first of three encounters. Keep up the good work and thank you again for your voice, Brian. Hmm. There you go. Another one, another one, another one. And that's about as up close and personal as you can get, right? Without one grabbing you. But anyway, um, that description is basically to a T almost of a being that I had emailed to me in a trail camera photo, which we ran a few through filter tests and deemed absolute credible. That is creepier than hell. And the woman who emailed it to me said I could share it with all of you. I've been tossing it back and forth because let's face it, you share a photograph online with anyone, it doesn't really make much of a difference anyway because, you know, photographs are photographs. I mean, we've got clear video of one. It's been available for years and, the, and for whatever reason it is, the entire planet has successfully made everyone think that it's fake. So, and like I said earlier, I'm not, I'm not uh, photographs and video clips don't really get me jacked up, but uh, the description of this thing was definitely exactly like the thing in this photograph I have and like Brian said he's never been back there since now I, I have about one two three four different places now that I don't go back to and uh, it kind of bugs the shit out of me I will go back that I'm gonna have to start forcing myself to go back to some of these places because I realize now these things are basically everywhere at any time they want to be so it's not like there's an invisible border that gives me that spot to play with and they're not going to be there or vice versa so I don't know Brian I'd say thanks for sending your story in I strongly advise you guys to go back there if the elk hunting's good because uh, I have a sneaky suspicion that it doesn't really matter where we go when we go out hunting like we do especially on horseback and remote but uh, these things are going to be there so what do you do, right? I mean, I'm not willing to give it up. I'm not willing to give up my outdoor passions because of these unknown beings. And, uh, you know, on average, they're not, on average, the encounters are harmless. They're just terrifying. And it's only because we're not familiar with these things. And, um, but um, the facts don't lie. Something is going on in the wilds that is taking human beings today 
and there's no way uh, there's no way we can get out of that fact, you know. So um, obviously we all got to be cautious and uh, do the right thing at the right time and follow our gut. But um, but there you go. There's another story and another one and another one and another one, and I'll be sharing more soon.